Oh, yeah, you're actually long. getting a 12 inch long or six. Excuse me, sir. My, my Subway sandwich is only 11.99 inches. So I would like a complete refund and 300 pounds. Yo guys, what is this video? I'm reacting to is Subway bread actually a cake? All right, I'm just telling you right now, if this is true, I might have to rethink my life. Like, what's wrong with this freaking camera? Like, do you want to die? Shit. All right, it just did it again. Do you want to die, camera? Like, honestly, do you want to die? All right, let's get into the video. I, I say, this is actually true though. I might have to like rethink my life because Subway sandwiches should not be bread. I, I, I want to leave, but I don't, because it's made the video longer. But let's get into the video. Right, three, two, one, let's get it. Here's a fun fact. The Subway oh, footlong sandwich is actually a foot long. That might seem obvious, but it wasn't always that way. Back in 2013, there was a viral photo of someone who took a tape measure to a Subway sandwich to show that it was actually only 11 inches oh, in length, God. which led Subway to hilariously claim, quote, Subway footlong is a registered trademark and not intended to be an actual measurement of length, even though they had explicitly highlighted the fact that it's a foot long in their ads. Anyway, all of this led to a class action <laughs> oh, a lawsuit, long, and as of 2015, you, Subway now requires long. that franchisees measure the bread that they serve to ensure that when you order a foot long or six inch sub, you you're actually long. getting a 12 inch long or six. Excuse me, sir. My, my Subway sandwich is only 11.99 inches. So I would like a complete refund and 300 pounds inch long sub. Fortunately, that's all behind them. Surely Subway isn't hiding any other lies from us that might breaking news. Subway's sandwich bread is not bread at all. It's not even serving bread. Subway's bread is actually too sugary to meet the definition of bread. Folks, too I think we got ourselves bread. a food theory episode. <laughs> Idea. Hello, Internet! Welcome, Welcome to, to Food, food theory. theory! Don't forget to sub. Theorists, today <laughs> we're having a cold-cut <laughs> convo about no. Subway, the world's largest quote-unquote sandwich chain. And I'm putting sandwich in quotes here because as anyone who's tried the entire menu already knows, Subway is really just an amazing cookie store masquerading as a sandwich restaurant. Because seriously, those things are delicious. In Except all seriousness, the though, recent there. events have thrown Char Subway's Char status yeah. as a sandwich chain into question. If you've watched Food Theory's definitive episode on what makes a sandwich a sandwich, then you know the following must be true. A sandwich must legally consist of two pieces of yeah. bread. Of course, sub of sandwiches course. are a bit problematic because they're served on a single split roll. Personally, I could go either way on that one, but, but like I don't write pieces, the sandwich you know? rules here, people. I just meticulously research them. Besides, mm -hmm. I'm not here to split hairs about split rolls when a far more shocking exactly. revelation about Subway has recently come to light. Their so bread awesome. may not actually be bread. Reportedly, Subway's famous nine grain multi seed, nine grain wheat, Italian herbs and cheese, Italian, Italian white, Italian hearty Italian, and honey oat bread varieties aren't actually bread at all. At least that's according to one ruling from the They're Supreme Court bread. of Ireland. Okay, so I'll be honest. Ta a couple weeks ago, when I first saw this article appear in my feed, I dismissed it as clickbait. I mean, it is a huge accusation. Subway's bread isn't bread. It sounds insane. It sounds, it like sounds well, honestly, it sounds kind of like a title of a food theory. This Episode. But the algorithm Isn't definitely has me pegged as a sandwich boy and I kept getting served this particular article again and again and again to the point where I just had to read it. And let me tell you, the Irish Supreme Court makes some really interesting and important points about it? bread classification. And not only does their decision affect Subway restaurants, it could affect a whole lot of other foods and people and companies <laughs> out there. But never fear, like theorists, no, we're getting to the bottom of this doughy dilemma right now. Because right, we need answers with right a now. capital K. Does Subway we actually serve answers. bread, or have they been lying to us all these years? And if course, it's not actually bread, then liars. what kind of unholy creation have they been feeding us? Now, let's start off by acknowledging that this isn't the first time Subway has gotten into trouble over their bread. Fun fact, if you go to Subway's own website, they have a page where they document all the changes that they've made to their bread products. According to Subway like, themselves, hmm. in 2014, so they mess, quote, mess increased whole list. grains and removed caramel coloring from nine grain wheat bread. Each nine grain footlong now contains 100% of the whole grain requirement recognized by the whole grain
Grains Council and the Whole Grain Stamp, end quote. Uh, let's just take a moment to appreciate the marketing spin that we just witnessed in that second sentence there. See, the Whole Grains Stamp that Subway is so proudly promoting actually has a few different levels. If there's some whole grains in your food, you might be allowed to display the basic stamp. If over half the grains in your food is whole grain, you get to use the 50% plus whole grain stamp. And if your food contains all whole grains, then you earn the coveted 100% whole grain stamp. So now, from dude, Subway's like... blurb about their nine grain footlong, we can see that their nine grain bread has qualified for the 100% whole grain stamp, right? Wrong! They're tricking us with language. Subway okay. is cleverly disguising the fact that they merely added you enough whole bastards. grain to their recipe in order to qualify it for the 50% plus stamp. By saying that their bread now contains 100% of the whole grain requirement for that 50% Ooh, stamp. That now, sneaky. why would Subway care about inflating the appearance bastard. of whole oh, yeah, grains nice in now. their bread? Honestly, because it gives them the appearance of being healthier. The term whole grain means that every part of the grain seed, the bran, germ, and endosperm are all ground into the flour. Whole grain flour therefore contains more fiber and nutrients than other flours all that right. don't include every part of the seed. And health conscious individuals seek out whole grain products as a result. The cost mm -hmm. of being the healthier option it's though expensive. is taste. So basically oh, Subway taste. is trying to get the street cred of being super healthy while maintaining that sugary tasty bread that gets people coming back for more. You could say that they're trying to have Best their cake like bread and eat it too. The caramel coloring, the name nine grain bread, even the messaging around changes to the recipe are all designed to present Subway sandwiches as being healthier than they actually are. And Subway is by no means the only one doing stuff like this. Here's a food it. theory smart shopping tip for you. If you actually care about having whole grain bread or just healthier bread, make sure you're buying bread that's labeled as whole grain, which is a label based on how much of it is actually made from whole grains and not just settling for multi grain bread, which is a misleading marketing term that sounds healthier, but doesn't actually tell you anything about how much it's grain like, content hmm, the bread grain. actually it has. has. So as it turns out, Subway has a weirdly rich history of bread-related controversy. Nice. They've lied about the ingredients in their bread, they've lied about the length of their bread, and now here in 2020, they might even be lying about it being bread <laughs> in the first place. Which it's leads us cake. to the question that brought us here today, why is the status of Subway's bread up for interpretation? What's Ireland got against delicious bread? What horrific thing have they uncovered about Subway? Well, what it comes down Please. to in this case is our old friend, tax law. Tax See, law. in Ireland, they have something that's called a VAT, a value-added tax that's mm -hmm. applied to all purchases, or I guess I should say most purchases. VAT. Now, a lot of other countries of have something similar to a VAT. Generally speaking, the aim is to take the tax burden off of people buying groceries that are truly essential and put more tax burden on people who are splurging for things like sweets and prepared meals. In the US, for instance, oh, nearly like every state has its ah, own variation of which items so get taxed more and which get taxed less. And as you can see, it's kind of tough to categorize foods in a succinct way. Terms like food for home consumption and general groceries mm -hmm. leave room for interpretation. And yeah. so you sometimes wind up with weird scenarios like this one in California, where hot and toasted Subway sandwiches come with a sales tax, but cold sandwiches don't. <laughs> Needless to say, to companies like sneaky, Subway stand to make they, more plus, money if they can avoid taxes wherever there's a legal gray area of this sort of nature. And in Ireland, Subway stands to save on taxes if they can convince the country to classify their sandwiches as VAT-exempt staple foods. The logic here is that sandwiches are bread-based. Bread is a staple food, mm -hmm. therefore getting Less a sandwich tax. to go from your local Subway is just like getting food from the grocery store, of and course. therefore shouldn't Same incur thing. the value-added tax. So claims Subway. The counter argument coming from five of the Supreme Court's nine judges is that Subway's bread isn't bread, it's at least cake. in the way that tax law Apparently. defines it. Remember that Subway isn't just claiming that their bread is bread from a culinary standpoint, but from a tax-exempt legal standpoint. They're claiming that their bread qualifies as a staple food. But in Ireland, the Finance Act of 1985 states that the total weight of sugar, fat, and bread improver can't add up to more than 2% of the weight of the flour. And in Subway's bread, sugar makes up as much as 10% the weight of the flour. 10%. And I know that I've been dunking on Subway a lot in this episode, but it's not as though they're the only ones putting sugar in their bread. For example, a 6-inch 9-grain wheat bread from Subway contains about 3 grams of sugar. Meanwhile, yeah. their competitor Quiznos has 8 grams of sugar in their regular-sized artisanal wheat bread, which is approximately 9 inches in length. So Subway definitely wouldn't be the only restaurant affected by the Supreme Court's decision, yeah, which, which is essentially saying that just because something is called bread, oh doesn't mean that it's a what? staple food. For instance, 
banana bread has bread in the name, but it's sweet, something closer to a dessert. Likewise for lemon bread, cinnamon bread, and since it's October, can't forget that autumnal classic, pumpkin bread. There are course, all kinds of sweet bread breads just... out there. And I do want to be clear that I'm saying sweet bread, two words, and not sweet bread. Single word, which is actually a culinary term for the meat made by the thymus or pancreas of a lamb. You heard that space when I said it, right? Because the waiter a few years ago did not hear it when I said <laughs> it. And um, let's just say I wound up with a very unexpected meal. Anyway, yeah, when you think like, about it, a lot of these so-called breads sweet bread have more in common like with meat. cake than they do bread. You could get into the argument that the difference between cake and bread comes down to leavening techniques, but even that gets into sticky territory when you realize that not all cakes are leavened in the same way, and some breads aren't even leavened at all, as any fan of flatbreads can tell you. And yes, technically <laughs> there are leavened flatbreads. The distinction between bread and cake is impossibly complicated. And so in 1972, the Irish legal system came up with a simple definition. If the right. sugar, fat, and bread improver content goes over 2% of what the flour content is like, by weight, then you're not a bread that would qualify for staple food status. Bread, like you can still you. call your pumpkin bread bread if you want to, but it's gonna be taxed like a confectionery or a dessert. Or as Marie Antoinette said, if the people can't have bread, then let them eat cake and pay the value-added tax on every purchase of said cake. It also tells us that while this might be bread from a culinary standpoint, that's it means smart, that though. Doctors yeah, Associates Inc. isn't serving up food that's as healthy as they want us to think. Oh, sorry, is, is that name unfamiliar to you? Because Doctors Associates Inc. is actually the name of the company that operates as Subway in the U.S. Not making that one up. I don't know why, but of all the facts that we've talked about in oh, this episode, God. this one makes me feel the most icky. The small upside that's for Subway is that I while their that. bread doesn't qualify so for the zero you, rate VAT, it does qualify for the reduced rate VAT. According to the website run by the Irish Revenue Commissioners, which is basically their version of the IRS for all you American viewers out there, bakery yeah, products no. other than bread qualify for this rate. But here's the face turn, people. Here's where I jump in and defend Doctors Associates Inc. Ugh, I'm on their side. Bread, you know, the Ireland court is correct in saying that uh -huh. it's following Irish law, but Irish law is the outlier here. Just take it from their neighbors in Northern Ireland and the rest of Great Britain, where the Bread and Flour Regulations 1998 define bread much more simply. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of lost now. Like my brain is bugging out. Because I'm, I'm still can't even get over the fact that their bread is classified as a cake. And let, let's just get to, let's just keep watching. As food that, quote, consists of a dough made from flour and water with or without other ingredients, which has been fermented by yeast or otherwise leavened and subsequently baked or partly baked. Criteria that Subway's bread would most definitely qualify for. Yeah. Oh, and uh, part of the requirement is also that it, quote, is usually known as bread, which I guess is there to keep <laughs> you from taking a cake and calling it bread. Ireland did win their independence from Great Britain yeah, like, in the uh, early 20th century, so they're free to choose to define bread however they wish. But a set of Tax laws passed in the 1970s and reified in the 80s are starting to look a bit outdated and also a bit close-minded when you realize that even the staple food definition of bread excludes many types of breads that are considered dietary staples in other parts of the world. Mm. Take, for example, Japanese milk bread, milk whose bread. sugar Ooh. content is upwards of 20% the weight of the flour it contains, and unlike, say, banana bread or pumpkin bread, which are separate confectionery items, milk bread is most definitely used as a sandwich bread. And what's more, the tax legislation legislation's definition of the word bread doesn't match how the world uses that term, oh including in Ireland itself. Numerous pieces oh, so breaking of Irish laws. legislation, including Ireland's health regulations of 1994, actually define bread much more generously. Quote, bread includes the following and any part of the following. Baps, bread rolls, fancy bread, milk bread, malt bread, and fruit bread. Now, aside from the fact that a oh, bap is bread. the most hilariously sounding bread product bap. this American has ever heard of, that's let's take bap. a moment to acknowledge that milk bread, the very same super sugary staple that we were discussing moments ago is specifically defined as bread in this Irish act passed by the Minister for Health in Nine consultation dead. with the Minister for Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. And I'm not sure about you, but that's who I'd be looking to for my definition of bread way before I talk to a tax commissioner. <laughs> in short, by Irish Dude. tax law definition, Subway's bread is not bread. But by food theory's bread, bread definition, it most certainly still is, Thank even you. if you're in Ireland. And if Ireland has a problem with that, well, they can just go ahead and take it up with Ireland. But <laughs> hey, have you ever aspired to be a true sandwich artist? That was the end of the video, guys. Thank God bread is actually bread. All right. If you... I was actually going to bug out. But if you guys enjoyed the video, you know, it's a long video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, of course. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.